Hey everybody, this is Dusk for Dustin on Gaming, doing a re-recording of match number four in this league. Uh, there was just a whole host of distractions and other stuff going on, so decided to reshoot it. Uh, it'll be a good example of why not to play Magic the Gathering Distracted. As a friendly reminder, if you like what you're seeing on the channel, please consider giving us a subscribe, a thumbs up, and a comment down below. So, this is the Boros Burn list from Sandy Dog MTG that we've been playing the last couple of matches. Uh, this is episode 3, match number 4, doing a replay since we had some recording issues and some other stuff here. Uh, notable stuff in the, in the deck, we're playing Force Gear of the Critics. Uh, we cut two Skull Cracks and two Lightning Helixes from the main deck in order to fit Skewer in the main deck. Uh, sideboard, and we also have one Grim Lava Mancer on the main over the 20th land. Uh, three Path to Exile on the sideboard against the bigger creatures. Uh, three Rest in Peace for the Graveyard decks. Two skull, additional Skull Cracks against Life Gain. Three Smash to Smithereens against uh, anything artifact based. Uh, three Searing Blood against small creature decks. And then one Lightning Helix for racing situations and when you need an additional instant speed spell. So let's go to match number four. Um, first up, game number one had a bunch of stuff going on, some Christmas decorations being put away and stuff, so I was a little bit distracted. So, opening hand, I end up keeping this because I accidentally hit keep, should not have hit this. Uh, four lands, three spells, not good enough in this particular deck, but we end up keeping opponents on the play. They lead on Noble Hierarch, we drew another land. Punish us, of course. Draw. Searing Blaze, deal with Devoted Druid. They have Eternal Witness to get back the land. So we're obviously up against Counters Company. So go ahead. Fire off these. Don't attack with the Goblin Guide here, because there's a jump block with Eternal Witness. They get a Knight of the Reliquary down. We play out Goblin Guide. Goblin guy down, lightning helix there. Knight, attack in. I figure here they'll probably keep the Dusk Watcher recruiter around, but they see Court of Calling on the top of their deck, so they go trade, trade. Then they cord for Knight of Autumn in the main deck, put themselves to 11. That said, I mean, if we still draw good from this point, we have enough cushion, but we continue to draw creatures. Attack here, they have another collected company for the blowout in the Corsair and Scavenging Ooze. With a Dusk Watch Recruiter on top, and with, uh, you know, a billion creatures in the graveyards and a bunch of green mana, we're not coming back from this point, so. Because they'll just go block, block, and then eat a bunch of stuff, and that's kind of the game. So, sideboarding. Basically boarded in most of our sideboard, boarded out uh, Boros Charms, Lava Spikes, and one... Didn't board in one of the Path Exiles, we ended up boarding in two Paths, three Searing Bloods, these two Skull Cracks, and the Lightning Helix. So, that said, this is another situation where we have a Four Lander. Um, this combination of cards, it's really hard to lay down your hand. Uh, maybe we should have, given the flood issues I've been having of lately, but only having 15 more lands in our deck in 53 cards, I figured pretty good chance we'll rip like 3 out of 4 spells, so I end up keeping this hand. Um, go ahead, get that in. Opponent has turn 1 a mana dork. Get in for a bunch of damage here. They have Sin Collector here, which kind of sucks. And then we do Goblin Guide. Start hitting in here. Opponent at this point is drawing a bunch of lands, has a Dusk Watch Recruiter in hand. They pass, collected company during our hit some big creatures. So now we're just kind of in chump block mode. Hope we draw enough spells here. Chump with that, trying to keep them from casting too many spells. So we're not in terrible shape at this point. Our opponent's got us on basically a two turn clock. So if we hit spell, spell, we're good. Do Eternal Witness, get back the land. 
So we fire off Helix on end step. We get Devoted Druid. We draw a creature, which was a bad time to draw a creature. Basically, it may, basically left us dead, pretty much. We had to hit hit spell on the spell there. And I skull crack here to try to keep our Swiss Spear alive and potentially have an attack, but just the way opponent lined up an attack, I was expecting a company activation. Instead, we got a collected company into Night of Autumn plus Eidolon of Rhetoric, so... There was no one spell there that was going to get us out of it. So, put an attacks, and we're pretty much dead here, so. But, a couple lessons from that. Um, burn may be very easy to play, but you still need to be concentrating during the match. So, don't do not do as uh, Dusk Till Dawn does, and, uh, you know, not pay attention to your mulligan decisions in game one. That certainly probably cost us game one, although our opponent had a very good draw. It's likely that even with one of our good good draws on the draw there, we were going to get punished and beaten. And then match number two, um, or game number two, it's possible we should mulligan the hand, but it's really hard, especially on the play, to imagine you know a situation where we're going to do a lot better. Like that goblin god got in for... Four, you could argue even six damage if you consider that the other goblin guy traded off with the Sin Collector. Our Eidolon dealt them, you know, two, two damage. So, you know, it's really hard to argue with two cards dealing eight damage overall. And then buying us a turn or two as chump blockers. So, it just didn't rip the right order of spells after that point. So maybe we should have mulligan in game two. But... In all honesty, I probably would have kept Game 2 hand on the play against most decks. Especially, you know, especially if you could guarantee your Swiss Spears or your Goblin God's going to get in twice and your Eidolon's going to trigger at least once. Um, it just so happened our opponent had Sin Collector to take our Rift Bolt and then we didn't really draw the right mix of spells after that and I was forced to play my Skullcrack proactively in that one spot and they were able to punish us. Um, otherwise, we were dropping them to 5 um, and then combination of like skull crack and maybe another or that searing blaze into another spell the following turn might have been enough to get us but the fact that they had collected company in Gavney Township there we were very punished for our sequencing and lack of drawing spells after keeping a four lander so you know that was the risk risk reward game one was a punt by keeping a hand that I shouldn't have because I wasn't paying attention and clicked the wrong button because a lot was going on here around the house and then in the second game Potentially agree to keep on a four lander, but I think the hand was good enough um, on the play against Counter's company that I honestly probably would have kept that hand. So, anyways, sound off in the comments, especially on that game two hand, whether you would have kept it or whether what you would have mauled. Um, you know, I apologize that I didn't concentrate the best there on my keep in game one, but tried to play the best I could in game two, but we still got punished. So, this has been Dusk for Dusk on Gaming. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel.